Hey, hi! Welcome to Someone Else's Movie, the original podcast where an actor, writer, director, or nebulous industry figure gives a little love to a movie they didn't make. I'm Norm Wilner, senior film writer for Now Magazine, and this is the other thing I do. Time for another Bonus Friday episode, and look who I have for you this time. It's John Rhys Davies, beloved to a generation as Sala in Raiders of the Lost Ark, and to a different generation as Gimli in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and generally just beloved for performances in dozens of other films and television shows. You name it, he was probably in it. The Sweeney, I, Claudius, Shogun, Victor Victoria, The Living Daylights, War and Remembrance. He even played the Kingpin in one of those Hulk TV movies, that's how busy he was in the 80s. And because he stars in the new thriller Tainted, with Sean Roberts, Sarah Weisglass, and Aaron Poole, among others, I got the chance to get him on this podcast, and of course I took it. John picked Tolkien, Dome Karkowski's speculative biography of the man who would write The Lord of the Rings, with Nicholas Holt as the young John Tolkien, Lily Collins as his lifelong love Edith Bratt, and Derek Jacobi as the academic who opens the young man up to a much larger world and gives him the tools to ultimately process the trauma of wartime into an epic fantasy about small characters battling an unimaginable evil. You know the one. The audio isn't great, and it's shorter than usual, but I hope you enjoy it. This is someone else's movie. I, I did not grow up naturally with an interest in Tolkien, but I acquired it uh, in connection with the job that I had to do. And, um, and, and slowly it dawned on me that this is a remarkably successful human being. Um, and I, I really looked forward to, the, uh, to seeing the film. I caught it first of all on an airplane. Actually, I caught, caught it three times on an airplane, but I did, I've actually seen it in the cinema as well. Um, and it is lovely. Uh, it has that, it has a sense of history. You know, that, that thing of, of the widow and the children coming back from South Africa uh, and dad has died and she's in reduced circumstances, but you know, she, you know, she's a, a, a good Catholic and has obviously connections in the family that the, 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 uh, the, you know, the priest who will, who advises her and encourages her, and helps these boys into a good school. And, uh, and, um, and the wonderful camaraderie that can exist in a civilized all male school. Mine was a pretty uncivilized all male school, I have to tell you, but 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 certainly cinematically, this is a, a fairly civilized school, um, and just watching these bright young boys, with all their futures ahead of them, with their dreams of becoming composers or artists, and um, you know, it's so endearing and and so recognizable and this wonderful figure of of tolkien beginning to develop these things in his imagination and 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 being able to have friends who could say that's wonderful you know we ought to be doing this we ought to form a fellowship you know yes uh, although it takes them a while to get to that word which i think is one of the best runners in the entire film <laughs> yes um remind it ray do you how do you say it again um, remind me of the word. Um, Which, sorry. Sh sh what's that, the word that they have? It isn't oh. Shazam. Oh, um, yes, no. Um, Heilheimer? Their, yes. Their, their Carpe Diem code? Yes. Heilheimer! That's the one. And it is, it's silly, but it's not silly at the same time, is it? Because the uh, I, I found it really impressive that the movie, while it is you know, undeniably creating a new mythology out of things that we've already seen with the, the coming of age story, the origin story. It, it, it's as formulaic in its way as every other recent, the, you know, there've been two films about the young A.A. Milne and all of that okay, the development and the way the art emerges from the artist. But this one doesn't have any sort of ironic distance. It simply allows it, which I thought was almost daring in a way yeah. to, to allow something to be genuine. And, and as... Because when you think of the naivete and in, innocence of, 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 of young men and things, I mean, when I look back on some of the things I said and thought and did, I mean, I blush with embarrassment. Exactly. 
every generation thinks they invented this or that, and everybody thinks that this idea is new. In in Tolkien's case, he's creating a filter that will produce new ideas. Yes, but yeah. right now, he's in the world of the film. He is just a kid being uh, very very grandiose. It's just that you know down the road he actually will do the thing that everyone does remember him for. That's right. Um, oh, by the way, the performance in it, uh, and, and that's not to dismiss any of the others, but the, the performance in it that just touched my heart was my old friend Derek Jackby. I had a feeling. Uh, as, as the professor. You know, a, a, you look at a performance like that and you think, oh, Derek, that is, that's perfect. There is, there is not a note missing or wrong or misplaced Oh, it, it, it is as perfect as a piece by Mozart. It is just flawless. It's, it's just grace. Yeah. It's the kindness, isn't it? It's the patience yes. and the kindness. There's something yes. that you just don't see that on screen very often. No. Um, and I wonder if that's it, that a character actor of a certain age simply knows he can do it or she can do it. They're, they're put in a position to deliver the, you know, you, you want Derek Jacoby, you hire Derek Jacoby, you will get whatever it is he gives you. That's right. And he's just so, he occupies so little space, but he yes. resonates through the entire film. I just love seeing him, but yeah. For me, for me, it, it, it's, it's an academy of performance, frankly. I think it's, I think it's, it's just perfect. Uh, and it just, it gives that film actually, well, it does a number of things. It, the warmth just radiates forwards and backwards. Um, but, but, but the way that the Tolkien finds what he really wants to do by, uh, in, through this and on this generous, rather obscure scholar um, who is just one of the world's experts on, on, on two of these really remote languages, like mm. Finnish and things like that. Um, and that lovely thing where I think, I think there, I, I, I think Tolkien is either doing, it may be Beowulf, but I've got an idea, it may be the Battle of Malden. You know that 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 insignificant little battle that's commemorated in a poem with those wonderful words. You know, um, courage grows greater, a sword grows sharper as our numbers diminish. It, yeah, it's those wonderful sort of resonant things that poets talk in in time to each other. Uh, I mean, that's. That's the point of Eliot, you know, talking about uh, taking that line of of, um, uh, of Spencer, sweet stems run softly till I end my song, and and Eliot answers, sweet stems run softly, for I speak not loud nor long. Yes, and you know, great artists do talk backwards and forwards to each, each other in time. And at its best, I suppose, um, players can do. When you, when you come to London, and I do manage to take you to the Garrick Club, we have the greatest collection of theatrical in, art in the world, as you know. I should um, think, yes. And, and um, I love being there at the weekends when everyone's gone home. There's a skeleton staff looking at the, the people who are staying over on Saturday night or Sunday night or something like that. And you're, I'm often on my own there when I am. Uh, and I just like wandering around at night, just talking to Garrick or, or Peg Wolfington. Gag, uh, Garrick's um, live-in mistress. They used to share the. Um, they used to share the the housekeeping. He would pay the bills one month. She would the next month, and and all their friends would prefer it when she was paying because she was a far more generous <laughs> hostess and things like that. 
but you know you see them and uh, and and you you know you 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 remember that scandal associated with that one and that with this one and you know the the the, the slight right on the edges of respectability and frequently of the wrong side of respectability that that the troubadours have uh and um and they're all wonderful human beings and you uh you know you're part of that tradition i mean i worked with gilgood who was ellen terry's nephew and Ellen terry worked with uh with with irving i uh, i'm sh pretty sure she worked with irving hang on uh let's have a look sure uh, what have I got here? There's an old thing at the Lyceum. I wonder if she's in this one. Lady Macbeth, for the first time. Can uh, you see it? Oh, yes, Miss Ellen, and then it's cut off. Oh, Terry, yes, there you go. Yeah, God, wow, look at the history of it. Yes, indeed. Irving, I believe, had worked with, with Keane, and, uh, it, you know, it goes... That's not possible. But certainly there's a connection. There's an apostolic, apostolic succession sure, sure. that goes back, you know. And, and um, you, you know, we are very conscious, we actors, of, 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 of passing on the baton, uh, you know, to the ones who, who are willing to take it up. Mm -hmm. But anyway, to, to get back to the film that I beg your pardon. That I'm no, 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 not at all. I was going to say we were speaking before this, before we started the episode about the intimidation of history and, and the sense that you're stepping into something where, you know, giants have not only tread, but are still treading. Yeah. And, you know, in a way, I think I, I understand what you're I understand what you're saying about actors but it goes with and, and with with writers and artists in general. But certainly it's Yes, indeed. And it's interesting to me that this film is set entirely in the before, that we never get to the creation, that it's all, it's all inspiration. And the man, you know, goes, he, he, he gets everything right. You know, his wife loves him all his life. Mm -hmm. He loves his wife all his life. His children adore him. He has friends uh, who respect and admire him. People with completely different views. For instance, you know, like um, uh, the screw tape ref letters. Um, oh, Lewis, C.S. Lewis. Lewis. Lewis starts off as agnostic, really, but becomes a very close friend of his. What's odd? I mean, academic life is so filled with treachery, backstabbing, insincerity, and 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 condescension, and even hatred. Yeah, that it's, it's very hard to escape. It, 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 yes, it's worse than politics. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it, it's it's unusual that a man is not only loved by his students but is loved by his fellow staff members. I bought a a a front actor, a front loader for, a, for my tractor, okay. secondhand from a place in Oxfordshire um, called Entwood. And, <laughs> uh, and uh, I drove up to the place and I, I bought the thing and I said, Entwood, very odd, isn't it? And he said, oh, you, don't, you do know the history of the place. He said, one of Tolkien's fellow... Uh, professors owned this property and the next one there and uh, Tolkien often used to come to stay uh, particularly when he was writing um, uh, Lord of the Rings and between the two of them they actually built the two towers uh, as, as, as little bonfire places in the garden and, <laughs> and, and there, 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 there they are um, 
but just that little insight into out of out of term time you think you would get away from um uh, your fellow scholars sure. uh, uh, but that, that that you know that that he was he was that capable of friendship i mean he gets through world war 1 alone i mean i mean he's he's wounded in the first day of the first battle of the somme uh, and um British Army took 100,000 casualties, 80,000, uh, 20,000 dead in that 100,000 yeah. on the first day. Um, it's, it's horrific. And, and, you know, there are entire films about that battle, let alone, you know, I guess a flashback or as an incident here in, the, in this narrative. And, but, it's, it, but, but what's interesting is that, I mean, you cannot look and see your fellow officers. I mean, uh, at one point on the Western Front, the, the life expectancy of a new subaltern was something like 18 minutes, um, you know, of actual action. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot look and see those men dropping to your left and right without asking yourself, why am I here? Why are we doing this? Uh, and is it worthwhile? And And... For Tolkien, with his religious faith as a good Catholic, there is also that sense that they are there to stop German militarism because German militarism is, is out to conquer and ensnare the world. And if you do not stop German militarism, then you will lose a civilization. And Lord of the Rings is not about the rise of Hitler and all that sort of thing. Its roots are far more profound than that. It, it comes from that war for civilization, the great war for civilization. Um, and, and he gets through it because he knows that he is, they are fighting the good fight. And though he is stressed beyond belief, he's not broken by it. Graves. Sassoon, Wilfred Owen, um, are virtually broken men. Um, if they don't die, you know, they when they come home, they're broken men, essentially. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, he gets through that, and he goes on, and, and, and he becomes all these wonderful things, and then he creates a, a new genre of fantasy literature. Um, not many people get anything right. Some people just seem to get everything right. Yeah. And he's one of them. I, and I do wonder if that's why the family has been so protective of the legacy. They, you know, they were condemning this film before it was released, before it was even shot, I think, uh, as an incursion, as an intrusion into the life of their, of their patriarch. But uh, I, I've been going over, just because I knew we were going to talk about it, I've been reading back on the reviews and seeing a number of people have, have pointed out that, you know, they'll probably be okay with it if they see it, because it doesn't try to add any drama to what was already there. It's, it's very, very yeah, it's a very pastoral retelling of a man's life. It, well, the war scenes are obviously horrific, but yeah. for the most part, he was very lucky to find someone who loved him back. He was very, very lucky. lucky to be able to end up where he ended up uh, to to be taken in to find to make the connections he made it's in a way it almost feels like an anti-narrative to the lord of the rings where you know frodo is swept up into something he doesn't really want to be part of and, and would really rather stay home and eat and instead his life is forever changed and ultimately derailed by this adventure and and tolkien just sort of found his peace yes and it let him create i, was, I mean at least that's the thesis of the film and i i find that kind of beautiful i it, it is uh, and yet it is still it, it, you know it, it's still it doesn't overly dwell on but it still reflects the terrible losses those boys end up dead or damaged sure 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 you it's know, a hard and, one piece yeah for for the one who survives that's right and I'm sure he felt guilt, and I suspect that that's in the film. But um, but you have 
the best of them manage to say, I have to live and live well because they didn't. Um, and uh, and that's, a, that's a huge burden to carry, but he, 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 it's very hard to fault the life, Tolkien's life, you know. He, he is a man of his times, but he's also a man of utterly different times as well. And, uh, you know, he's, he's a giant, he is a real giant. I, I never much cared for his writing when I was at university. And I was so wrong about most things at university. <laughs> I was flippant about bloody Keats being just a sort of, a wet sort of girly, sappy sort of poet. Um, until you really look at those odes and you just see such a sinuous, wonderful, sensitive, nearly erotic intelligence. Yeah. I think you need to be in love at least twice before you get Keats. This is my pet theory. <laughs> yes. I'm not sure um, how Tolkien works. Maybe you just need to like the songs. Well, I... I Number one son came home from the Dragon School in Oxford, um, where I think actually Tolkien's children went to school, actually, eventually. The Dragon School is a very famous English prep school. Um, what charmed me about the place was the wonderful story about the boy who came back from half term with a duck egg under his armpit, and the school encouraged him to hatch it, and then allowed the duck to follow him into class and round because it had bonded with him. Sure. Any school that does that really has a lot going for it. By the way, Boris Johnson went there, went there as well with, with, my, with my sons. But, but he came, number one son came back one half term with Lord of the Rings, and we did not see him. Five days. He was in, just in reading Lord of the Rings. Number two son, uh, I tried to read Lord of the Rings too, and we would both fall asleep <laughs> as we were doing it. My thanks to John Rhys Davies, who's still hopefully enjoying the quiet on the Isle of Man. You can catch him in the new thriller Tainted on digital and on demand right now, wherever you demand things digitally. And thanks to Ali Lemaire Shedden. She knows what she did. John's not on Twitter, which is kind of a shame, but he does have a YouTube channel, which is a lot of fun. And you can find Tolkien on Blu-ray and DVD from 20th Century Fox Home Entertainment. It's also available on Apple TV and Google Play, and streaming on HBO Max and DirecTV in the US, and on Crave in Canada. As always, you can find me on Twitter at Norm Wilner, and elsewhere on the internet at NowToronto.com, where I'm hosting a bunch of podcasts as well as writing about movies and television. And you can find this podcast on Twitter at Semcast, S-E-M-Cast, and on the web at SomeoneElsesMovie.com. Our theme song is by The Last Year. If you like it or you like the show in general, say something. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or wherever you've been enjoying the show. Every little bit helps. It truly does. And check out the other programming on the Frequency Podcast Network. It's a good lineup. Stay inside. Watch movies. Wear a mask if you go out. And don't miss Tuesday's episode. It's a really good one.